everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Denise Torres and I'm a wig fashion expert and author. I'm excited to share a sneak preview of my book, The Whisper of God's Voice. Today, I will share my journey from low self-esteem to self-approval. How do you do that? I'm about to tell you. I was a people pleaser and avoided confrontation at all costs. It was easier to bottle up my feelings than to go through drama of judgment and rejection. The obstacles that entered my life didn't just test my faith, but opened my eyes to the limited beliefs I told myself. Circumstances forced me to get out of my comfort zone. I aim to empower my audience to build confidence and fine tune their voice, especially if they face similar struggles. This book is about my journey of resilience, determination, and learning to believe in oneself, regardless of anyone else's perception. Doesn't misery love company? Therefore, why let someone else's insecurities become yours? Growing up, I had an older sister whom I looked up to and admired, but she saw me as her birthday twin rival, born on the same day, seven years apart. She liked cake, I liked ice cream. Her idea of constructive criticism, correcting my pronunciations in the most dramatic, Oscar-worthy manner. It was like living with the grammar police and etiquette trainer, but with a serious lack of badges. I could hear her voice so loud and clear, correcting my speech. It's not said more better, it's much better. They sounded the same to me. Don't get me wrong, constructive crit critiquing brings forth understanding, but when you do it with a tone of belittling, it can strip your self-worth. Picture this, at a backyard gathering, she catches me picking at the grapes with, with a quick command, must I teach you etiquette? You don't pick from the bowl, you place them on the plate she lived in her own reality show, Days of Our Lives, soap opera, wearing rabbit fur coats to high school and ruby cocktail rings, as if she was born in Buckingham Palace. Her approval was always too far out of reach for me. Self-doubt crept into my life like a snail, leaving trails of uncertainty, leaving me feeling never smart enough as I used incorrect grammar and had tongue-twisted pronunciations. I also didn't feel pretty enough because I was told I had a big nose. I used to mush it against the wall, thinking I could make it smaller. Well, that was much cheaper than surgery. Now, we all have crossroads. Two things can happen here. You can allow negative words to imprison you from reaching your true potential or use it as fuel for empowerment. For me, I use it as kryptonite. In my pursuit of approval, I divorced my artistic side. Watch out Picasso, because here comes Bill Gates. I ended up majoring in something as thrilling as business computer information systems. Why? To impress my sister, of course. I'll show her with her voice screaming loudly in my head. There's no money in art unless you're dead. Thinking it over, I said to myself, I mean, who needs the Fashion Institute of Technology when you can master the art of programming? The mediocre grades I received made me even more disappointed because technically that was not my passion fruit. Winning an art award from kindergarten didn't have much merit to me or the voice of my art teacher telling me I can acquire a scholarship. I ignored all the approving voices, but I'm here to share that if people steer you in the wrong direction, you can still get on the pathway to your talented self superhero strength. If you learn to believe in your extraordinary uniqueness, thanks to my sister's financial foresight, my business degree gave me the skills to establish the wig boutique corporation. Who knew being a business creative technical wizard had its perks for Picasso. I artistically designed my website, for Wig Boutique, and now I'm a digital content creator for myself. However, my career, my career move still left me with low self-esteem. When does change happen? When you either get burnt out, where you had enough, or you have no choice because of life circumstances. For me, it was both. I got burnt out being a people pleaser, 
not realizing I was overcompensating the approval of others because my sister's expectations were too far out of reach. Shortly after delivering my second son, I found myself stretched thin, trying to meet everyone's expectations. I was exhausted. I had enough. That's when I delved into the book boundaries. All the things I was avoiding finally came to a head. Turns out losing friends who were more like energy sucking vampires, who knew this was the detox I so desperately needed. Then shortly after I got in a car accident and that changed the whole trajectory of my life in the blink of an eye. I lost my house, my kids, my marriage and my business. Talk about a drama movie winning Oscar award. Who knew being burnt out and losing everything would become the catalyst for finding my inner confidence? Sometimes you must go through the furnace to be re refined like gold. I finally shed the old skin of being extremely sensitive and now have acquired alligator skin of self-approval. I no longer allow feelings to call the shots. I had no clue I was an entrepreneur or successful with a thriving business as I even purchased my first home while single, but my finances were barely making ends meet. And that's what made me feel unsuccessful. Since then, I have redefined the meaning of success. Today, I can say I'm successfully accomplished because I don't entertain fear. I meditate on the scripture verse, Philippians 4.13, I could do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Today, I'm proud to say I'm a self-published author despite my shortcomings in grammar. Subscribe below as I navigate the twists and turns of life, sharing my victories and vulnerabilities. Through my experience, I hope to inspire you to overcome obstacles, embrace rejection and redirection, and take control of your emotions. But above all, I'm here as a confidence coach who reminds you never to give up, no matter how daunting your path may seem. Together, we'll learn to trust God, even when it doesn't make sense. Be patient with yourself and celebrate every strand of hair moving forward. You're not defined by your circumstances. You're defined by your resilience and the courage to embrace change. Why stay stuck and frustrated when change is just as frustrating, but will deliver a different outcome, which is what we all seek. Insanity is defined as repeating the same situation while expecting a different result. Yes, change is challenging, and anything new feels so uncomfortable. It's, a difficult, it's as difficult as skydiving or public speaking. I made a declaration to myself to confront my fears as my friend, to fuel my undiscovered superpower. I took a leap of faith, literally, when I jumped out of a plane after signing my life away with a death dis disclosure. Bon voyage. I allowed my heart to race and I practiced to calm my spirit, knowing that I would land safely. Now, I have to say, skydiving is much easier than public speaking. I've come to realize I'm only competing with myself. And I could hear my son's voice. Mom, it's not that serious. <laughs> Love those kids. But when you put the hard work in of stepping out of your comfort zone is when you see results. Not only you will respect yourself for it, so will others. In the comments below, please share how you define success and what your Wonder Woman cape of confidence, makeup, hair, clothing, or shoes is.